When I first met you, you had just gotten basically your first car of your own, right? You met you met me the day my car broke down. My so the first car I got when I moved out here broke down like two weeks later, and I walked to the gym and met this asshole. <laughs> Fuck! I'm just putting this together. I should have known from that point on. The day I met Zach Mertens was the day my car broke down. Fast forward two years later, shit breaking left and right. <laughs> It came off the fucking axle. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. It's very obvious. Almost three years ago, I moved out to LA. Before that, I didn't have a car. I lived in New York, I went to school in New York, then moved out here, got my first car. It's a Cadillac CTS-V. It was a Guido wagon. After I got the CTS, I wanted to know more about it, so I started watching Top Gear. Got completely addicted to the show. As I was watching more Top Gear, I started getting into Aston Martins. It was right about that time when my Cadillac started shitting the bed on me. I saw they had a V8 Vantage that was 100 grand, which was like the cheapest Aston Martin you can get. And I was like, that's not, that's not a whole lot more than the CTS. I could get that right now. I did not get the V8 Vantage. I got the V12 because I got a piece of sage wisdom from Zach Mertens. Now that piece of advice I got was don't get the entry level model, which is ironic because I have the entry level model McLaren right now. <laughs> Key difference is that it's the same car with a smaller engine. And Zach was like, if you see someone stunting around town in a V12 and you got the V8, you're gonna look at yourself and go, God fucking damn it, I wish I got the V12. <laughs> When I bought the car, the dealership said that they'd take me on their track experience, which is an event they have for owners where you can bring your car to a private racetrack and learn how to drive it from professional drivers. That track experience was the first time I've ever really driven a car. Not just to get around from point A to point B or to look cool, but like really drove it. And that's exactly why I bought the car. I wanted to buy a car to drive it. I wanted to learn how to drive. I didn't want to be a poser. I wanted to use a thing I just paid for and not let it sit in a garage and be like, well, it's, you know, it's expensive, so I don't want to ruin it. It's like, no, it's expensive, so I want to fucking drive it. I want to get my money's worth. Mike's definitely a special breed when it comes to these supercars. They uh, very rarely get to see a track when any guy buys one, but Mike gets them out there and takes them to their limit, and that's what's the coolest thing to see. So few people really get the chance to experience what it's like when it's at the limit on a racetrack. Learning, experience, and, and skill opens up more things you can do with it. I went from like not knowing any fucking thing about driving to still really not knowing any fucking thing about driving, but like getting a taste of what it could be like. And so after that day, I'm like, what else can we do? So the dealership told me they had another event coming up the next weekend. There's a charity event called the Sun Valley Road Rally, where they shut down a stretch of about three miles of highway out in Idaho, and you can take your car and do top speed runs down it. It's thrown by the uh, Idaho State Police, and so they radar you, get your top speed, and then give you a ticket with your top speed on it, which is a pretty cool souvenir. One of the coolest parts about the experience was the different people you met there. People bring in their $2 million Bugattis, there's people driving Indy cars, 80-year-old woman driving a Corvette at like 180 miles an hour, what'd they call her? Um, Go go granny. That's right, because we uh, thought she might have been a stripper. We never got confirmation that she wasn't. Day, day job. Night job. As much as Zach and I were the total black sheep of any sort of event like this we go to, I identified very much with, with, the, with these people and with this crowd and with this experience. Everyone there was connecting over the thing that they loved doing, which was driving. That's where the playing field sort of levels, because whether it's a $2 million car or a $20,000 car, there's still a driver behind the wheel. I wanted to document how to get into the world of motorsports. How to start from a complete beginner and jump headfirst into it. It seemed to me that you had to grow up in a family of people who built cars in their shed, started riding dirt bikes when you were three years old. I think without realizing it, I was looking for a hobby. I was looking for something else to put into my life. The gym had been my hobby for years, since the beginning of college. At times, it started to seem 
This is gonna sound like heresy, but a little unfulfilled. Now, I will never stop being in a fitness, stop going to the gym. That'll be always something that's a part of my life. But at times I'd ask myself, all right, I worked out, my diet's on point. What do I do now? Where do I take this hobby? To the bar and just crush it with this pump. We're doing this bitch, son. But no, you know, that, that too gets old. As soon as I got in a car and started driving, I knew that was something I wanted to be doing. You cannot do it from here or just in the same spot every day. It's the opposite of stationary. You can't do it from your comfort zone. You have to go somewhere. So even if it just takes me to a place I've never driven before, or if it takes me to an experience I've never had before, it's forcing me to live life. From the very start, just getting into the world of being like, I'm a total newcomer. Like, how do I do this without you know, looking like a scrub or crashing, which makes it difficult but also rewarding. Because if you want to do more, you got to step outside a bit. If you want to get better, you got to push it a little bit more. You have to find the limit. I feel like every week I'm trying to knock something off my bucket list. It's the adrenaline you get from being in the moment of doing it. Or afterwards, you're like, I, I did that. I just did something that I never thought I would do in my whole life. Bucket list. It's easy to get complacent, especially with something that is difficult to start. But that is exactly how regret just starts to take over your life. I'm gonna relate this to what got me here in the first place. People sometimes ask me, uh, what's, your, what's your best advice for someone who wants to make YouTube videos or be successful or uh, be in entertainment, whatever. How did you get to where you are? The one thing I tell people is start early. You have to just start. That's how I got into making videos and comedy uh, with Gion, is as soon as we went to college, we knew what we wanted to do. We wanted to write comedy. We had a goal and we just started. We didn't go, uh, you know, what if I this? No, we just did it. And that's why I hate Puerto Ricans. John, we're rolling. Hi, I'm John Cher, founder and CEO of Video Professor. Five years before we saw a dime, before anything we did was successful, before we got even a thousand views on a YouTube video. But we didn't give up. We knew that that was the only thing we wanted to do and there was no backup plan. What are you drinking, Dom? Energy beer. A full loco. We had a five year head start before we're out in the real world being like, can I do this? Oh, that's what happened, bro. Are you gonna black out? So by start early, I mean, as soon as you get the feeling. Early could be you're 45 years old, but you're like, I wanna do this right now. A start before there's real life reasons that make it difficult, because they'll compound. The further you go down a timeline, more things are gonna get in the way of what you really wanna be doing. <laughs> the same thing uh, for me applies to, to driving, where I got this car and I'm just like, yeah, you're intimidated by the whole thing, but just start. Every moment that you pass that you don't do it, you're gonna, you're gonna look back on that one moment and been like, I could have been this much further, but I was a bitch and I didn't do it because uh, I'm being practical or you know, I'm being realistic, get a real job. I still, every time I do something, go through that process. That never goes away. You just have to learn to push past it and get out of the comfort zone. It's constantly gonna be there. That's what makes what's on the other side rewarding. You're gonna be fucking terrible at first. Like in every respect. It's not only gonna suck in the beginning, it's gonna seem like it's, you should not be doing it. It's gonna seem like you are doing the wrong thing. I should just quit, because I'm, I'm not getting anywhere with it. Or this is ridiculous, you know, you're being childish. <laughs> you're like, you shouldn't be out here doing this. Like go, go get a job, be an adult. Why? Like so I can spend every year just doing the same shit? Like no, I'm, I'm, I'm alive, so I wanna live. Team NAR. It's a relay race with the fastest, most gnarly vehicles on the planet. Huh. 